Acts 27, and uh, I'll read verses 21 to 25. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Paul, uh, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray as we uh, gather together around your word this morning. Lord, I, I want this uh, sermon to be an encouragement to us and uh, to, to help us as, as we uh, face the storms of life. And Lord, um, though we might not be going through a storm Today, it might be tomorrow, it might be a week, a month, I don't know. But I pray that this message will, will help us in those storms of life. And I ask in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Please be seated. Um, as I was praying what to preach on this morning, I felt uh, impressed of the Lord to, to preach on uh, what I had posted on our Facebook page. And if you uh, didn't read our first first. Facebook page this week, this is what I put. In Acts chapter 27, Paul and his companions are traveling in a ship and they have entered into a terrible storm. It looks like all lives will be lost, but God is going to show mercy. In verse 25, Paul first tells everyone to be of good cheer and then he tells them why. Deliverance was going to happen just like God said. Are you in a storm? If so, go to the word of God, find some promises that God has made, Believe them and then be of good cheer. As a preacher, I'm commanded by the word of God to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And it's very hard as a, as a pastor to be balanced. Some uh, uh, spend too much time on reproving and rebuking, and some spend too much time on exhorting. And it's, it's really, really hard. To be balanced. If you just uh, exhorting all the people, you, what you have is, is uh, wishy-washy people without sound doctrine. But if you if you uh, just reprove and rebuke, what you get is hard-hearted people. And so it, it, God wants a balanced preaching. Having said that, though, I believe as we head into the end of the end times. I think people need encouragement and exhortation more and more. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10 verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some in is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The, the day uh, of Christ coming for us, as, it, as, it, uh, as closer it gets, the more important it is to gather together in person as Christians, but also to exhort. And so this morning I want to exhort you, and uh, I've entitled this message, How to Be of Good Cheer in the Midst of a Terrible Storm. How to be in good cheer in the midst of a terrible storm. There's some terrible storms in life. The most terrible storm that I've gone through is the storm of losing our daughter, Grace, at 14 and a half years old. It's a storm that our family went through, and, and uh, it, it was a horrible, long, terrible storm. We weren't made for death. We were made for life. But I can tell you this, that God saw us through. And uh, like Paul says, wherefore, sir, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. The promises of God saw me through that terrible storm. We, we have gone through terrible storms uh, of not having enough money to pay your bills i it's a terrible storm when you when you look at your income and, and, you, and then you look at your bills and you say my bills are more than my income and uh it's it's horrible i i but god will see us through i i've told this story a number of times in church but uh 
I was out handing out tracks in the city center and uh, this is a number of years ago and, and I had, we had 20 euro, uh, pounds at that time left to our name and I had lost the 20 pounds on the street that day so we had nothing. But the very next day, God saw us through the storm. I got in the post a, a, a check from my mom. She don't, in our, I mean, besides birthdays and, and Christmas, this is the first time and the only time she sent us money. And I looked at it, and it was from, from Canada, and I looked at it and I said, oh, mom sent us $20. No, 200 No, 2000 She sent us $2,000. You know, in the midst of the storm, God saw us through. Lord, we can be happy because of you. We can be of good cheer because God sees us through. You know, it's a terrible storm when you have friends and family that turn on you because of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's painful. You, you think somebody is your friend and, 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 and you find out they've been using you. That's a horrible storm to go through. and We've gone through that. But God says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. You know, there, there's a terrible storm that people face. Now, I've never faced this storm, but a life-threatening threatening illness. That's a terrible storm to go through. And though I've not gone through it, I expect one day I will. But I believe this, that in the midst of that storm, God will give me the grace so that I can be of good cheer. And so this morning, I want to say that there's many storms in life. And either you are in the middle of a storm, you're going to go into a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. Because storms are common in life. And uh, now, I'm going to go through the whole chapter, and I'm not going to preach on it, but I'm going to read it and, and make a few comments. God has written his word to encourage us. And uh, so this... God is, gives us lots of details in the book of Acts. I mean, the book of Acts covers a long period of time. But uh, Acts chapter 7 covers a short period of time, uh, relatively speaking. And yet God gives a whole chapter to it. So it's really important. So I, I want to cover this. Paul is going to go to Rome uh, because of his testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ and how the Jews hated him. And uh, he appealed unto Caesar, and because he was a Roman citizen, he could do that. And so in chapter 27, verse 1, it was determined that we should sail into Italy. They delivered Paul and certain of the prisoners under one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. So they're going to sail to uh, um, Italy, and uh, they're, they're going to go, and uh, they're, they're going to bring a fellow, Aristarchus, from Macedonia, and uh, remember, the, uh, talked about the the uh, the um, the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia. I don't know. Excuse me. I thought that this was on silent, but it's just uh, I don't know. It's beeping away. Uh, I thought I had this program to go on silent, but sorry about that. But um, so they enter a ship and. Hopefully I can get these names. There's going to be a number of names in this chapter, and they're always difficult. But in verse 2, And entering the ship of Adorianthium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, and one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. So they're going to go, and, and now uh, they, they launch out, and, and uh, they, they, they head out. So let's read verse 4. Uh, sorry, verse 3. And the next day we touched at Sidon. Uh, Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go into his friends to refresh himself. Everything looks great, doesn't it? I mean, the, the uh, Julius is good to him and, and, and they're giving time to refresh. And they, So verse 4, when we launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. Things are starting to look a little bit difficult now. And when we had sailed over the sea of Sicily and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And so now they, 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 uh, things are starting to... The, 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 
this trip looked great. Everything was going fine. But now we're starting to see a little bit of difficulty. And now it becomes even more. Uh, so in verse 6, and, they sent, and there's, there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing on, into Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over uh, against Nidus, uh, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Siloam. So now they're sailing and it's just not going the way they're supposed to. And I, I suppose, you know, sometimes storms come upon us immediately. And sometimes they slowly build up in our life. But no matter how the storms come in our life, God will be with us. And so in verse 8, And hardly passing thence to a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto the city uh, was Lassie. Now, things start to get rough. Verse 9, Now when much time was spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said to them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with much hurt and much damage, not only of the lading of the ship, but also of our lives. Paul sees he's coming into a storm and he says, this is going to be a terrible, terrible storm. And it's going to, it's going to be such a storm that it might even cost us our lives. I don't know about you, but if I'm going on a ship and, and I hear there's going to be a horrible storm and it might even uh, 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 cause us to drown, I wouldn't be looking forward to that, uh, that uh, ship voyage, would you? I mean, if I told you today uh, you're going to be on a ship in a hurricane, I don't think you'd be very excited. And so... Uh, Start off great, but now things are getting bad. And Paul knows it and he perceives it. Uh, but um, they won't listen. Verse 11. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken of by Paul. So they're not listening to Paul. Now verse 12. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised thence to depart thence if by any means they might attend unto Phineas and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete and lieth toward the south, west, and northwest. But when the wind blew softly, supposing that they obtained their purpose, loosening thence, they sailed close by Crete. So now it looks like maybe the storm is going to, going to pass. And you know, in life, we can have it and we think there's going to be a storm and then it doesn't happen. And then it comes upon us. And life is, is like that. There's ki all kinds of storms in life. And this is one storm that Paul had to go through. And it says, uh, verse 14, But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocloiden. And now they're in a terrible, terrible storm. They're in a storm. And, and understand, the ships like then weren't big like our ships. They would be even... even uh, much smaller and when you're in a smaller ship and the waves hit you go up higher and down lower now i i'm thankful that i i've never been seasick uh but you know some people get very very seasick i i was a i think i've told you this story before but uh when i lived in canada uh, in my final year of uh, secondary school i i lived in an island and uh, i had to take a bus and then I had to take a ferry across to the mainland. And then I had to, to walk. And, and uh, so it was an hour and a half trip each way. But one time, it was incredible. The storm had hit. And, you know, teenagers are rambunctious. We were on the ferry. We'd always be joking and laughing. But this was incredible. The boat was about 40 feet high. And when we went down one wave, you looked around, and all you could see was water. And you couldn't see anything but water. And then you'd go up and down. And I, I, not a word was spoken amongst us. I'm telling you, storms are no fun. It, no, none of us were joking and laughing about that storm. And when you go in, in the, the storms of life, you, you begin to, 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 to be despairing and discouraged. And so this is why I want to encourage us. So let's continue on. 
And when the ship was caught and we could not bear it in, up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps ungirding the ship and fearing lest they should follow the quicksand, strake sail, that's like set sail, and were so driven. And we being exceedingly tossed in a tempest, the next day they lighted the ship. Could you imagine? They're exceedingly tossed. I mean, you know what it's like when you're in, maybe you've never been in a ship like that, but literally you're thrown this way and then the wave hits and you're thrown that way. And the smaller the ship, the more you're thrown. You're in a big ship, uh, it's not as much, but th these ships wouldn't be like big ships. And they were small ships and they were just literally thrown this way and thrown that way. Have you ever been at a trial in your life like that? A storm in your life where you feel like you're just thrown against things? Listen, be of good cheer. And I'm going to talk about that. Be of good cheer. We can be of good cheer in the midst of a storm. And that is only by the grace of God. So they're tossed and they lightened the ship. So let's go to verse 19. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay upon us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. Have you ever been in a storm and you just have completely lost hope? I mean, you're going through something in your life and you think there's no hope. It just can't, it just can't work out. It's a terrible, terrible feeling and it's a dark feeling. They had no light. Could you imagine seeing no light, being tossed this way and that way and without hope? That's not a very pleasant place to be in. But now we start to see something. Verse 21. But after long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. <laughs> Paul says, I told you so. You should have listened to me. But now he says this in verse 22. Now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Think about this now. He says, I exhort you to be of good cheer. Listen, he, they're in this storm. They're being tossed to and fro. There's no light. They're despairing. And they fear for their life. And Paul says, you don't have to. You can be of good cheer. How to be of good cheer in the midst of a storm. And this is a terrible, terrible storm. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood be by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Verse 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. God's revelation is now finished. But everything to be of good cheer in the midst of the storm is written in this book. And what is the key? Anybody see it? Verse 25. One word. Believe. Second word. God. Believe God. Believe God. That is the key in the midst of the storm. Believe God. And then we can add, because of what he says, his word. Believe his word. Now I'm going to read to the end of the chapter to see that just like God said, there was deliverance. And then... Um, We'll be finished the introduction. It's a long introduction. Okay, uh, verse 26. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. And they sounded and found it twenty fathoms. 
And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15 fathoms. Then fearing lest we should fall upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And the shipmen were about to flee the ship when they let down the boat in the seas under a color as though they would have cast anchor out of the foreship. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these men abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Now in the midst of the storm, sometimes people are going to desert you. That's a hard thing, isn't it? I mean, you have, you have friends, you've got family, and in the midst of the storm, some people are going to say, that's it, I quit, I'm leaving. But God never left them. And God protected them. Verse 32. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And when the day was come on, Paul besought them to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore, I, <coughs> excuse me, I pray you, take some meat for this your health, for there shall be not a hair fall from your head of any of you. And when he had spoken... He took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Now, notice some things here. God was the one that was going to look after them. He said, God will look after you. God will protect you. And then he gave thanks in verse 35. In the midst of the storm, believe God, trust in his word, and give thanks. Thanks. So in the midst of the storm, what? Believe God. Let's say it. In the midst of the storm, what? Believe God. Come on, say it out loud. In the midst of the storm, believe God. Believe God. Trust in his word and be thankful. And verse 36, and they were all of good cheer. And they also took some meat. Look at that. What happened when they... Believed God, trusted in his word, and became thankful. What happened next? They were all of good cheer. Had the storm stopped, yes or no? Did it, had it stopped yet? Anybody? No, it hasn't. They're, they're still in the midst of this terrible, terrible storm, but they have good cheer. Isn't that amazing? That is is the grace of God. They believed God. They believed his word. They were thankful. And they became of good cheer. Now verse 37. And when we were all in the ship, about 200, three score and 16 souls. That's a lot of people in a small ship. And when they had eaten enough, they lighted the ship and they cast out the wheat into the sea. And when the day... And when it was day, they knew that not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded if it were possible to thrust the, sh to thrust the ship in the ship. And when they had taken the anchors and committed themselves to the sea, they loosed the rudder's band and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward the shore. And falling into a place where the two seas met, they ran the ship aground and the forefront stuck fast and remained unmovable but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape. Now look what's going to happen. They're in the midst of the storm. I mean, it's, everything is falling apart. People are going to try and kill them. But God is still in control. Verse 14. But the centurion willing to save Paul. Why was the centurion willing to save Paul? Because God did it. God did it kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which, should, could, they which could swim should be cast themselves into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. What a wonderful story. Praise God that he recorded that for us. Because now we know how we can have good cheer in the midst of the storm. Believe God. Trust in his word and be thankful. Now, as I said, you're either in a storm, going into a storm, or coming out of a storm. But some, 
Some storms are severe, some storms are not so severe. But God is with us in the midst of the storms. But understand this. Remember in storms, the circumstances always look bad. And in the midst of bad circumstances, Satan is there whispering to you. And Satan, remember, is a liar and the father of it. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And you know what? In the midst of the storm, when they feared for their life, what they were saying is, and what Satan was whispering was, God doesn't care about you. He's left you alone. Look, it's dark. You haven't seen the daylight for days. Listen, the, look at, this star, look at the, 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 uh, the storm. God doesn't care. And that's what Satan whispers to you in the middle of the storm. But God says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth. For you. We read Acts chapter 27 and God cared for Paul, didn't he? Amen? And, and God loves you just as much as he loves Paul and God will protect you. And, and you just cast your care upon him. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. You know, uh, sometimes we think this is just too much. I, I just can't handle it. And you're right, you can't. And Satan says, this is too much for you. This is going to crush you. You will be destroyed. And that's how sometimes we feel in the middle of a storm. But God is there. And there hath no temptation taken to you but such as common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. God says, I, I will see you through. I will carry you. I will look after you. Yes, you're going to go through this storm, but you can be of good cheer in the midst of the storm. Paul had to go through that storm. And one of the reasons Paul had to go through that storm is so that you and I could read Acts chapter 27 and be encouraged so that we know in the midst of the storm that I'm going to go through or I'm going through, I can be of good cheer. All I do, need to do is just believe God, trust in his word, be thankful, and he will cheer my heart up. Sometimes in the midst of the storm, you, you, Satan says, well, you don't have enough faith. You just don't have enough faith. If you had faith, you could do it. But you know what? The, the, the father of the sick child cried with tears. Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. All you have to see is, Lord, help my unbelief. Ah, you know what? Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Listen, you can be in good cheer in the midst of the storm. Yes, Satan will be whispering lies to you. Yes, Satan will be there to discourage you. Yes, it may look dark. Yes, you may feel tossed to and fro. But God cares. But God will see you through. Satan says you can't make it. But God says I can do God tells you, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You know what? God could have taken away the storm. And sometimes he does. He just takes the storm away. I've been, I've been there. You think you're going to be in a terrible storm. And, and, and all of a sudden, it's just flat calm. And sometimes you just go through the storm. But however God deals with it, he will strengthen you. Satan says, you can't do it. And you, you say, you're, you're right. I can't, but God can I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. God will never put you into a storm that his grace won't see you through. Sometimes you think, even in the storms of life, I can't trust in God's mercy. I just, God has shown mercy time and time again. And, and I, he, has he run out of mercy for me? But you know, Lamentations, I love this verse. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies. That we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Do you know what? You never run out of God's mercies. God's mercies are new every morning. So every morning there's enough mercies. And so I go back and, and I've never, I've never uh, worn out God's mercies. And Satan will say, God's mercies are finished. He's given you too much. And God says, no, no I haven't. I've got more mercy for you. I've got more mercy for you. It was the mercy of God that saw Paul and his companions through. 
Wherefore, sir, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Why, why should I believe God? Because of God's nature, who he is. God cannot lie. The Bible says in Titus 1 verse 2, in the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. I believe God because of God's nature. God is the all-powerful God that can see me through. He can, he can just calm the, the storm or he can see me through the storm. But God cannot lie and he's given me wonderful, wonderful promises. And so in the midst of the, the, the storm, like Paul, I, I, I say, I believe God that it shall be, even it was told me. God has told me many, many wonderful things in his word. And you know what? In the midst of the storm, God wants me to just believe him because of his nature. All, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1.20, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. All the promises of God are in him are yea. All the promises of God are true. All the promises of God are amen. So be it. The promises of God, I can lean on them and I need to lean on them in the midst of the storms because God put them there for me to help me in the midst of the storm. You know, Satan is there whispering, God doesn't love you. You go through a storm and if, if God really loved you, why would he allow this to happen? I don't know why God has allowed so many things to happen. I mean, it, I wouldn't have done it this way. But God knows what he's doing. And the Bible says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I believe God because I know he loves me. I mean, how do I know? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ died for me. I know God loves me. I can be of good cheer in the midst of the storm because I believe in the love that God has for me. I believe in the midst of the storm that God has a plan for me. Romans 8, 28, for, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We are looking things under a microscope in life. But God's got it all a big plan. And if you look at things, you know, and you say, well, how does this work? And if, if you're, but when you see the whole picture, you realize God's got a plan. God had a plan for Paul. And part of the plan was Paul was going to go through a storm, but for a purpose. And one of those purposes is so, is so that you and I could be encouraged when we go through our storms in life. And God's got a plan for me, and he's going to work everything out for my good. Wherefore, sirs, be of good care, courage, for I believe God. I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. It's told me. God's told me he loves me. God's told me he's got a plan for me. God told me he's got mercies for me. God's told me his grace is sufficient for me. I believe God. In the midst of the storm, I'm going to believe God and be thankful for him. I'm going to be thankful. And the, you know, in the midst of the storm, Satan, Satan says, you're all alone. And God says, no, you're not. I'm with you. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. What a wonderful God we have. I believe God in his mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new ever morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Wherefore, sirs, be of good courage. Be of good cheer. I can have courage in the midst of storms because of God. And finally, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Be of good cheer. Why? Because now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. God is more powerful than any storm in your life. So, 
I hope this has encouraged you. Maybe it's just for me alone that needs that encouragement, but I'm greatly encouraged that in the midst of the storm, I can be of good cheer. And understand <clears throat> this. Uh, in verse 35, And when he had th thus spoken, he took the bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when they... <clears throat> sorry, that's not the verse I was looking for. I've lost, I lost it and lost my notes, but uh, where it says... Uh, that they were all of good cheer. 36. Oh yeah. I just I need to read uh, verse 35. And when he had thus spoken, he took the bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer. And they also took some meat. Listen to me. They were all of good cheer. Now, you might think, well, Paul, yeah, he was a great man of faith. Not just Paul. Who is good, good cheer? All of them. It doesn't depend on you. All you have to do is just believe God. I want to encourage you this morning. Believe God. I think everybody here is saved, but... Maybe you're watching online and you've never been saved. Well, believe God. Believe that Jesus, lo that God loves you and that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. Ask him to be your personal savior. Receive him. If you'd like to know how to be saved, I'd be glad to show you. Just contact me. Christian, would you just do this? Would you believe God? Would you believe God what he said, be thankful, and then you can have good cheer. I hope this has encouraged you this morning, and um, God bless you. Thanks for your coming. Let's, let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you certainly encouraged me. Lord, help me as I go through the storms of life to be of good cheer, to believe you, to claim your promises, and then be thankful. And I thank you for the promise that I can be of good cheer. Thank you for this time. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you.